What's in the water? Tonight, Fox 25 Investigation Special is dedicated to examining an issue that has a direct impact on every person in Central Oklahoma. Our investigation began a year ago when members of one community asked Fox 25's Phil Cross to look into what was potentially causing major health problems in their hometown. Phil joins us now with an investigation that took him across the country in search of answers. Phil. That's right, guys. Right now, there is uh, Oklahoma's water is being studied by federal health and environmental researchers. Now, this study is part of a national effort to determine if what we've been drinking for years is truly safe or if, as some environmental advocates believe, it is slowly poisoning us. If one thing in particular defined me in high school, it was track. I loved to run. It was my release. For Amy Jarvis, running was how she dealt with life. And shortly after graduating from Noble High School, life threw something at her she couldn't run from. They told me that I had a malignant tumor. And at 19, I didn't know what malignant meant. Um, and so I asked, and they told me that I had bone cancer. Amy would spend years going through surgeries to not only remove the tumor, but also try to save her leg. They didn't work. The night before I went and had the surgery, um, done for my leg, I ran a mile. Amy's cancer was rare. Only about 800 people a year get it. She thought she was just unlucky. The last, you know, 800 meters of that on my old track hurt immensely, but I didn't know if I'd ever run again, so I, I wanted to do it one last time. It would be a few years later before she found out one of the rarest cancers had struck again and again in Noble. A friend of mine that uh, I went to school with, Carrie, um, she was, she called me, um, I remember that phone call and she tells me that she, she has been diagnosed with osteosarcoma and uh, her and I had been roommates um, just maybe a few years before that. Soon reunions of Noble's class of 1988 became full of stories of people in the small town who had cancer. Why are so many um, being diagnosed and then it all came back to, you know, well, remember when we were in high school and they told us about the water. The water. Noble's water meets all current health standards, but it's drawn almost exclusively from the Garber-Wellington Aquifer, an underground water source that is spread beneath much of central Oklahoma and known to be high in heavy metals. A review of thousands of pages of water records from Noble revealed this document created in the mid-80s showing the town had to shut down water wells due to unsafe levels of naturally occurring uranium. The Environmental Protection Agency didn't officially regulate uranium content in drinking water until 2000. The EPA also stepped in to regulate another element found naturally in Oklahoma water, arsenic, making a major change to what smaller communities like Noble had been doing for years that arsenic standards would change from 50 parts per billion to 10 parts per billion was a pretty radical change. Bob Wade is the Noble City Manager. He says the arsenic regulation change forced four city wells out of commission, a cost of a million dollars to the town for new wells, but even those new wells may not be in the clear. The EQ engineers were already talking to us about, well, when we get these done, why don't we run some tests, you know, for chrome as well? Chrome, or chromium, is another naturally occurring heavy metal, and the area around Noble and Cleveland County is the victim of some rather unlucky geology. These lab results from the late 90s given to Fox 25 show test holes dug in Noble tested well above the EPA standard for total chromium. DEQ records show all of Noble's drinking water wells are now well below that level, but the question becomes, is that level really safe? It is a good question, and I think every, uh, I think every municipality wants to feel like that you are providing a very safe product for your citizens. And, my, and like most of them, I, I live here and drink the water myself. But if you're thinking you've heard the name chromium before, blame it on Hollywood. Exavalent chromium can be very harmful. So it kills people. Oh, yeah. The story of Aaron Brockovich in Hinkley, California, a town polluted by a form of chromium known as chromium-6, or hexavalent chromium. In the movie and in real life, hexavalent chromium contamination plagued the desert community for decades. It led to a lawsuit and eventually a multi-million dollar settlement against Pacific Gas and Electric. Now, coming up after the break, we'll take you to Hinkley, California as it exists today.
Everything is like gone, you know, they're nothing here anymore for the kids today. And find out what's different about the chromium contamination in Hinkley and what exists in Oklahoma's water. Plus, certain parts of Oklahoma, they have a hex chrome problem in the drinking water and, and it needs to be addressed. What is Oklahoma's hex chrome problem and what's causing it? That's all when we come back. This is Hinkley, California, as most of us know it, from the movies, where Aaron Brockovich, as portrayed by Julia Roberts, discovers water contamination in the Mojave Desert community of Hinkley, California. But a drive through the desert today will take you to a very different Hinkley, one that is far from a Hollywood happy ending. The movies show one side of the debate over a chemical called hexavalent chromium, but what it is and what is it? Why is it in our water? Fox 25's Phil Cross has been investigating health concerns in one Oklahoma community and has more in tonight's special report. Phil. When I first asked who all had cancer in Noble from people who contacted me, I received a long list, mothers, fathers, neighbors, and friends. But was that normal for such a small community? And is it the water's fault? Those are all questions we wanted an answer to, and our road to discovery took us out of Oklahoma all the way to California. As night falls in the Mojave Desert, this is one of the last signs of civilization in Hinkley, California. Yeah, I just come to the work at the store, go home, you know. Nearest thing to go is the bar still, you know, to do anything, yeah. Yeah, here it's just kind of dead, you know. Chris Gardner works the night shift at the Hinkley Market in the place he's called home for most of his life. I used to come up here before then. My grandpa lived up here. And um, in the summertime, I come up here and we used to go to the reservoir and swim in it. He officially moved to Hinkley after the now infamous lawsuit was filed. My grandma died from a brain tumor and my mom died of cancer. With no settlement and no buyout, Chris and his family had little choice but to stay. I just think it was wrong, you know, just bad, you know, that people are dying from something, you know, that nobody knew about over the years. Just after dark in Hinkley wasn't always such a lonely time. But then the contamination happened, people started to die, others moved away. The school closed not long ago, and the rest of the town is slowly starting to disappear. Hinkley today is barely on the map. The market will likely close soon. I'm thinking about leaving, yeah. I want to go somewhere up north, you know. I, I've been around this desert for a long time, so I want to go somewhere where it's nice, trees, grass, and, you know, clean water, you know. <laughs> the only thing seemingly untouched by the fallout of the Hinkley contamination, the Pacific Gas and Electric plant, the source of the original Chromium-6 contamination. The company spent millions of dollars over the last two decades cleaning up the water, they say it's safe and now meets California's rigorous new hex chrome standards. I still want to trust it, yeah. Even though they said it's good now, I still want to trust it. In Hinkley, they know where their chromium came from, but in Oklahoma, it's not so simple. You see, as far as anyone can tell, the chromium is occurring naturally. There is a lot of hex chrome around the country, um, and, and Oklahoma seems to have some of the highest levels. Renee Sharp is research director for the Environmental Working Group, or EWG, in San Francisco. Total chromium is a combination of chrome-3 and chrome-6, or chrome-6 is also called hexavalent chromium. And it's, this is, it's tricky because chromium-3 is generally non-toxic, and chromium-6 is toxic. Because the element can make this switch, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, right now just regulates total chromium. But other EPA requirements for safe water may play a role in changing chrome into its toxic form. There is some evidence to suggest that the chlorination pro process may be actually uh, transforming some, some chrome-3 in the water into, into hex chrome. Our review of records shows that the wells in Noble all meet the total chromium standard, but after an EWG study reported high levels of hexavalent chromium in central Oklahoma, Noble did some tests of its own. This document shows hex chrome at 12.1 parts per billion, higher than what the state of California allows and much higher than environmental advocates say is safe. I think it's disappointing that there hasn't been more acknowledgement that there really may be an issue here that needs to be, that needs to be looked at. Okay, so we know chromium is here and it's apparently nobody's fault, but is it making us sick and if so, how?
Well, at this point, we don't really have um, a concrete uh, health effects data. Why Oklahoma environmental officials say we can't do research on potential chromium contamination. And if that did happen, I believe almost all of our wells would be in violation. Is it possible to clean up chromium? And what level of hex chrome is safe to drink? We'll answer those questions after the break. Welcome back to our Fox 25 Investigate special, What's in Our Water? Our stories have focused on the small community of Noble, but the concerns of contamination could potentially impact everyone tied into the underground water source in central Oklahoma. Fox 25 Investigates has found a history of heavy metals in our water. One of those elements, chromium, has been linked to a number of health issues. But are we seeing those same health problems here? Fox 25's Phil Cross joins us again with more on this investigation you'll see only on Fox. Information about the health effects of chromium were once focused on those who inhale it. It was labeled as something that could cause cancer, but only relatively recently have scientists began to study what happens if you ingest it through drinking water. But why is Oklahoma, which has some of the na highest naturally occurring levels of chromium in the nation, not studying it? Everyone needs clean water. Everyone has a right to clean water. But what does clean water mean? It is a question that, believe it or not, can come down to safety versus affordability. But just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. Just because arsenic is natural doesn't mean it's safe. And the same thing goes for goes for hexchrome. The state of California set a public health goal for hexavalent chromium at 0.02 parts per billion. Now that goal is, if cost were no object, the best case scenario. Now consider this though, in Oklahoma, some of the hexavalent chromium levels are nearly 600 times the California public health goal. At this point, we don't really have um, a concrete uh, health effects data. The Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality says the state's research is limited. We have not seen anything from the health department that indicates an illness cluster uh, related to any uh, waterborne issue. The state health numbers on cancer rates in Cleveland County, the area with the highest concentrations of heavy metals, are not out of step with national rates. But those numbers only reflect stomach and other intestinal cancers which were first linked to the health effects of chromium ingestion. Other research, including a report by the EPA, shows chromium can collect in bones. Some reports link it to bone cancer, like the rare bone cancer that hit Amy Jarvis and others in the same small area of Oklahoma. The three of us that have been diagnosed with osteosarcoma in just that small um, area, Cleveland County alone, um, you know, that, that speaks loudly. I mean, for a rare cancer to strike three people, um, there's, there's something or something definitely um, worth looking into there, I think. Even though the state of California decided hex chrome in the water is dangerous, Oklahoma says it simply cannot do the same research. We don't have the manpower to do it. We don't have the uh, research facilities to do it. And we certainly don't have the millions and millions of dollars that it takes to do a study like that. But the EPA is testing Oklahoma water as part of its own study on hex chrome. I expect to see some kind of a chromium six rule. Uh, I couldn't even begin to speculate uh, based on where it is today. The timeline would be at least a couple of years, I would think. Any hex chrome standard will come with a cost. California's current rule sets it at 10 parts per billion, much higher than the state's public health goal, but more affordable for cities to reach. And cost will be the issue communities like Noble will have to deal with. If that did happen, I believe almost all of our wells would be in violation. And then again, we would be looking at how to provide water to our residents. Bob Wade is Noble City Manager, where the water isn't collected and treated like in bigger cities. Instead, it comes straight from wells, which are all tested to make sure they meet the EPA standards. It is a good question, and I think every, uh, I think every municipality wants to feel like that you are providing a very safe product for your citizens. And, and like most of them, I, I live here and drink the water myself. Wade says there has been some talk about creating a regional water treatment plant, but he says he wants to wait and see the EPA scientific study results before anyone starts blaming chromium-6 for all local health problems. You really have to back off and look at the true science on what you're doing 
uh, rather than just rush out because it's politically uh, popular to spend money. We totally recognize that you know there are some economic considerations, but the cost, if you really truly look at the costs that are associated with people getting cancer and having other health problems, you know, the, the cost of treatment system is low in comparison. So where do we go from here? And how do you make the determination if your water is safe for your family? We're in the 21st century and we're still drinking water that could be, you know, poisoning our children, um, poisoning our elders. Um, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. After the break, how you can get access to information about your community's water records and we'll tell you how to get your water tested and treated. Welcome back to this Fox 25 Investigate special, What's in Our Water? We've shown you the results of testing that show high levels of a potentially harmful chemical in the water beneath central Oklahoma. But what's being done to remove it and can you do anything to protect yourself? Fox 25's Phil Cross joins us again with some answers to these questions. Phil. Guys, so far we've heard from state environmental leaders who say they expect some sort of chromium-6 standard sometime. And we've heard from environmental advocates who say heavy metals in our water are dangerous. But what can be done by our cities or even in your own home? When I was diagnosed, my doctor told me that um, there were only 800 people diagnosed in a year with osteosarcoma. And, um, and I, I, I remember being almost angry because I thought, you know, well, if it's that rare, why am I getting it? What Amy Jarvis didn't know at 19 years old was that her cancer would eventually cost her leg and take away the one thing that had always helped her through. Running was my way to deal with stress. Jarvis, like so many others who grew up in Noble, say there was always talk about the water. That was the thing. I mean, it, I, I, at school, you know, for athletics and stuff, we would mix, you know, the, the powder Gatorade with the water. And so it would mask, you know, any awful taste, you know, somewhat. At school, it was city water. At home, Jarvis drank off a private well. The city has to pass EPA standards, private wells do not. For a private well, uh, th that is up to the individual homeowner. Uh, the DEQ lab can assist with sample kits. Even if the EPA creates a chromium-6 rule, as the state DEQ believes will happen sometime, any rule would not apply to private water wells. The Garber Wellington Aquifer is uh, an aquifer known for its metal concentrations. Uh, they are naturally occurring. Uh, when you talk with cities like Norman that um, have historically relied on the Garber Wellington, you know, they can tell you how expensive it is um, to treat and remove some of those metals. There's also a concern about what to do with wastewater once heavy metals like chromium are removed. You have to deal with replacing that filter media. You have to deal with uh, the reject water, which is now very high in concentration of those um, contaminants, uh, so there's significantly more to it. But organizations like the Environmental Working Group say there are many other benefits to cleaning up chromium, including removing other contaminants. We know how to, cl to clean up chromium in drinking water. It's, the technology is there. It, it, it may not be the cheapest thing, um, but it's, it's doable. And it is possible cleaning up the water could help improve the health of Oklahomans. In the case of Oklahoma, given the, you know, unfortunately naturally high rates of a certain contaminants in the water, and including chromium, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was certainly a contributing factor. I would never say this is, this is the reason. But while the scientists, advocates, and political leaders all work to find a solution, the fact remains there is something in the water, and more and more research points to the fact it may not be safe. We're in the 21st century and we're still drinking water that could be, you know, poisoning our children, um, poisoning our elders. Um, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. And if you ask some of those who face cancer head on, it doesn't appear to be just the luck of the draw on who's getting sick and who will be left working, fighting to get their life back on track. That last run got me through, I think, because I told myself this will not be the last time you run. And I hope I didn't, hope I didn't fib to myself. 
Now, this investigation is by no means a complete look at all the issues surrounding our drinking water or chromium. There are many more issues for researchers and the city and state leaders to take a look at. But if you have concerns about your drinking water, our website is going to be a great resource for you. We'll have this story up along with links to the scientific studies from a variety of sources and a link to the DEQ's database and instructions on how you can find out what chemicals are in your community's drinking water and also how you could find a home filtration system that can work in your own home. All that will be on OKCFox.com. All right, Phil, thank you. That's it for this special episode of Fox 25 Investigates.